Pokemon I'm playing super evasively as usual. Uh, he can definitely scrap and play very aggressively. In this situation, it's definitely smarter for him to be playing uh, more of a keep away game, really. Uh, Charizard is super strong, and if you let him get one and if he hits it on you, uh, especially the tail, uh, it can end your stock pretty quickly. And he rode the Lloyd back in because he was expecting, he was clearly expecting, um, oh my goodness, the Lloyd rockets aiming both in the same direction. It looks like he might have had some packet drops. But they carry on. I really like Pokelime's use of the, uh, of the Void Rocket for riding it, specifically because like it can actually get you back to the stage pretty effectively if you use it like that. Use it the way he's been using it. Really good use of the platform there by Pokelime. Managing to make up his deficit, he is in a prime position to take the next stock if you can maintain this pressure. Villager is a character that can like he definitely uh, death of a, death by a thousand cuts definitely like rise to him. He's able to uh, to get in a lot of small hits and he generally like just annoy the crap out of you by hitting you repeatedly. But he's still got to get that one big hit and he doesn't have uh, if he played really smartly he doesn't have too much difficulty doing that. On the other hand, Charizard is definitely just, he's just a big character. He just hits you like five times and you're death's door. So you gotta be very careful with uh, with how you approach him when you face it. I like the fact that uh, that, that, that uh, Beast did not stand on top of the sapling there. And he's using the fact that he has stage control right now really smartly. Okay, I'm having the lead for the first time in this, uh, this match so far. Uh, Beast not quite able to place the kill thus far. Oh, a very good use of the slinky shot, and he managed to uh, to hit him with, at the very beginning of the upbeat. He had the super armor available. Okay, I'm having to recover low for the first time this match, and up throw is going to do it, especially on the platform. Pokeland playing super well right now. Until he's not trying to force the kill, he's playing patiently, which is very important. And Beast is, uh, he's respecting the fact that Pokeland has the tree out right now, that Axe can probably kill, and that if he approaches stupidly, he's gonna lose his stock. So he's playing very carefully. He's being patient, which is extremely important in this matchup. You cannot underrate how important that is. Not sure if a uh, grab in that position would have killed. Alright, Beast finally managing to get some, uh, some swings in. And a sweet spot back air, pushing Pokemon just barely off stage. Oh my goodness, great patience coming from Pokemon. He managed to, uh, he definitely picked his shots very carefully. And he didn't want to just rush in and potentially uh, give up his pressure and give up the amount of space he had. And each time he got a hit, you could tell like it was only like one or two. He only got hit like three times at the end of the stock, but it was like you could tell that he was playing very carefully because he didn't want to lose that control that he had over the pace of the match at that moment. Because if he did, that definitely would have meant the uh, that would have meant the, the the match. So very well played on his part.
All right, so what kind of counterpick do we have? Any uh, Beast is infamous for mostly entirely picking PS2, and it's great to see that he's not changing that trend in the slightest. Interesting, all right. This is clearly one of the situations where you're like, yeah, the stage wasn't the issue, I just need to kind of just change the way that I played the matchup. Which, that's a great mentality to have um, in certain specific matchups. Uh, if you're confident that you can win on your on your comfort stage, then you should totally go for it because it helps you figure out the matchup better overall, as opposed to relying on a counter pick to uh, to win it for you. Especially because like you know if you're down a if you're down a game, you have to think about game five slash three. Uh, this is a best of five set, by the way. Oh man, a great call out with the um, with the fly blitz there from uh, from Beast. Beast managing to make it back on the stage. He's reasserting some stage control after being off the stage for the last uh, few seconds. And really good use of flamethrower to do uh, a little bit of extra damage. I love that parry into the runoff up here. That was really smart for Beast. And one of the things that Beast does really well that a lot of people don't seem to do is that he tries really hard to, uh, to make sure if he ever flare blitz, he's not just doing it into his opponent unless he thinks it's going to hit. If he ever does flare blitz, he's doing it in positions where he knows his opponent isn't going to be able to catch it easily, and he's most likely not going to be punished for doing it. And wow, that was an insane back air coming out from Beast. Managing to take uh, Pokelamb's second stock, and now we have a 3-1 to one stock situation. And Beast still managing to hold on despite the fact that like he's at two, almost 200%. He is a hell of a heavy, but you know, Villager and Villager can have difficulty killing, but even that uh, living that long is kind of crazy. Okay, very good use of the of the of the pocketed razor link to get a little bit of extra damage. But Pokelam is not playing the way that he was playing the first match, and Beast is just doing a great job of pressuring consistently. Oh my goodness, that vine whip was so well placed, but Pokeland managing to DI perfectly, so he doesn't get killed for it. And Charizard only hitting uh, balloons with that back air. It definitely would have been the stock if he had actually gotten one. So right there, Beast is doing an awesome job of just pressuring the crap out of Pokeland. And then F Smash, and that's the stock. He's going for like these super raw flare blitzes. And dude, he that was so smart on Beast's part. He was just he just realized that Pokelam kept grabbing, kept pocketing the uh, the razor leaves. So he just threw it out to see like if he'd do it again, and he was able to get a super strong punish because uh, he just went for it. Very smart on his part, and that makes it one all. Alright, so where's Pokemon going to be taking us? Is it back to PS2 or... Hey, he's going home! He's going to Smashville. The former best camp, the former best neutral stage in the game supposedly was Smashville for I don't know how many uh, Smash games in a row. I guess there's Brawl from Smash 4. And Poke Lamp. Jeez, dude, he almost died from that. Tree is absurdly strong.
You don't want to get hit by any part of that down B from a uh, villager. Hello. Oh, hey. Zara, how's it going? Oh, the shield rake. That's nasty. Why? Why? That's fine. Better than not coming in at all. But welcome. Oh my goodness. Look at him. Must be kicking himself right now for not just going for the kill on the shield break. Alright, he finally got the kill though. Let's go. I really like the way that uh, that Dart uses the Lloyd Rocket Ride in order to make sure that um, his opponent can't really guess where he's going to come down. Uh, Villager's upbeat does give him a lot of distance, but it's so slow when you're fighting these kind of characters that have pretty decent mobility and really good options for punish you off stage. You want to try to be careful with how you use it. Oh, and a good Flare Blitz, but he fast fell the second jump, so it lost his stock. And Beast uh, is down. It's just a reverse situation from the last game. Beast is down three stocks to one. Oh, the jump off the wood rocket. And again, like you see, like that use of wood rocket from um, from, from Pokelam is like so smart because he's using it either to cover his uh, his recovery or just to get back as quickly as possible because he doesn't think that they're gonna be able to punish it properly. Oh, really good use of the pocket invincibility, dude. What? You for real? The more things change, the more things stay the same. And he almost died to Nair. Why? Pokelam is just stuck on the ledge. Forward throw finally doing it. Aren't Pokelam with a full, uh, still has, like, a ridiculous amount of percent at this point. It's mostly downloading. He's not the kind of person to just give up because he's dead, because he has a deficit. You don't want to give up games too easily if you can help it, but up tilt from Villager um, will take the last stock. Yeah, and up tilt, you know, like, despite not being as good of a move as it was in full, um, you know, Charlie's like just being so huge. Um, he tried to, like, air dodge through it, but yeah. absolutely not. I'm just gonna scoop him all the way up. He's like the one thing that it's still really good for is just getting people when they're trying to air dodge through. Mm -hmm. You can't like you can't get it on roll reads as much, as easily as you could in Smash 4, but yeah. For that purpose, it's perfect. It comes out like two frames quickly than Villager's up smash. Um and it does have like a fair amount more coverage. Um had like yeah. Pokemon committed to up smash, like Charizard might have been able to cross him up safely. Really? So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, and also the up smash hitbox can be really, really inconsistent. So if there's anything to say like about villagers up tilt, it's like okay, at least it kind of like functions sometimes. <laughs> at least it functions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> that's always a uh, that's always good words for a move. It's like sometimes it works. Sometimes, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> it's like there's a seventy five percent chance it won't work, but when it does, you better watch out. Oh yeah, no, I completely lied. It comes up a whole five frames faster than up smash. Oh jeez. Okay, yeah, that sounds so, way so, more reasonable. Yeah, it comes out, um, you know, frame seven, and it's basically active like from seven to twenty-five. So yeah, really, really good at stuffing up air dodges. That being said, uh, what's the game count right now? For DC? So it's two-one Pokeland. This is the best of five set. Mm -hmm. um, this is winter semis. See, on the other side, we have. Uh, well, it doesn't matter right now. You'll find out in a minute, won't you? Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have. Um, so far, this match has really been like. It's really been a lot of Poke Lamb just playing super evasively, just throwing out items. Mm -hmm. And Beast trying to get in close and boxing with him. And sometimes Poke Lamb wins when they're boxing with each other. 
He's, I feel like Pokemon right now, he's playing the Supu textbook. You see him covering the ground with Lloyd Rock and always cut, uh, calling out jumps, um, you know, with a slingshot. And he's just able to do so safely every single time. Um, yeah. I feel like Beast needs to be a little bit more ambiguous with his approaches because Pokemon just like has such a good idea of how he is going to be jumping in. Yeah, you can see Pokemon had the uh, the shield break set up there because he had a uh, Beast inside the tree when it was growing, and he went for four tilt instead of Axe. He didn't like trust that the shield break setup was going to work. <laughs> Yeah, the full is not gonna take it quite yet. What I really like from Pokelam is you're gonna see him like stall on the ledge a little bit with drop down Lloyd. Just as I was about oh my god. Yeah, no no he just he just proved it. It works so well. You have to respect it. Um just like a really nice way for the villager to flank the ledge. Uh you know. Yeah, if you're not expecting it, it's, a, it's definitely like a move that you would that's one of those buffer things where you're like, I want to run off the ledge, and then Pokemon, then uh, Ivysaur up air has like so much yeah. hits done that you just end up rolling them. Rolling. Yeah, no, absolutely. This, I've, I've been, and especially like the way that you tend to stick to platforms um, in this game as well, it can just make it so difficult to run off sometimes. That being said, though, Beast is starting to even this up quite a bit. You really can't be boxing with Villager in the air. His neutral air is so, like, it is one of, like, the most mashable moves uh, in the game. It's so quick, um, so safe to throw out, and you can have so little end lag on it, too. And that call out on the, uh, the swap there was pretty good. It was the late hit of the tree, but it was still a tree hit, so it be nice. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> that was such a visceral. <laughs> <laughs> what was that noise? Oh, it was just like, ah, oh, you're chaining my shield. I'm gonna kill you, kid. Stop. Yeah, Pokemon maybe got like a little bit too trigger happy on Charizard's shield. Like, that's always something you have to be extremely mindful of. He has really deceptively good out of shield options. Um, you know, that being said, he has to get like a little bit of a cheeky kill with the axe, is not able to find it, um, and continue setting up that ledge. Normally, Pokemon would try to set up another tree as Charizard is recovering, but unfortunately, he had his already on the other side of the stage. Yeah. Charizard is a big boy. He's not gonna be. Oh, okay, that was dumb. <laughs> That tree was out for a hot second when it when it killed Charizard there, right? Yeah, that was that was definitely a little bit bizarre. Okay, Pokemon. Ah, oh, no, he goes for the short hop forward. Air. Um, at that point, on oh, Ivy, so you have to go for the full hop forward, air, and then you'll be able to get like a couple of slingshots out of that. I oh, think really? said, yep. So like like on heavyweights at low percent, then you like go for short hop ones. Um, at high percent, you could even do like instant double jump for it. It works until like 60, 70 percent. Crazy. Villager, sometimes you know sometimes the character functions, and then other times. Oh no! I was he about did to say perfectly that again. though. <gasps> wake up! Yeah, quite literally, wake up. Wake up, DP. He just flew bliss to the other side of the stage, and he's gonna rob the. Oh my god! That was I don't so know if that was robbing. But I definitely was felt. Pokemon. I definitely felt fucking lamb like he had a few chances to get some some crazy damage or like even finish out the game, but he's just moved away quickly enough. Like he mashed perfectly. He did everything perfectly. Yeah, he mashed away, and then like Pokemon maybe got a little bit too comfortable. Like honestly, you should. You know, if you bury somebody that close to the ledge um, at such a low percent, they're going to be able to mash out of it 100%. You're not going to be able to get an F smash like that. Right? Yeah. You wanted it. You definitely wanted it. Mm -hmm. And that greed ended up costing him the match. Of course, like, Beast just, uh, he was doing a great job. Just, like, every un unshield hit reaction. Like, he was just perfectly doing up B to uh, punish Pokeram and try to make him reconsider trying to be so aggressive like right next to him because uh charizard's up b will scoop you like super duper well mm -hmm. yeah without a doubt and honestly um even if you were to whiff it he couldn't land in such a way that like he'd avoid any kill options for him villager at that point you know being so heavy like mm -hmm. the risk like the risk versus the reward i think was still pretty skewed in his favor that being said uh this is 2-2 two -two now is this game five between them? Yep, this is game five, yep. Mm. Ah, they're going for Kalos. This is such a good stage for Villager, especially against a character like Charizard. Charizard just has to keep breaking space in Villager. Um, you know, is able to make so much use out of those platforms. Oh my goodness. I, I really like Pokelam's use of the uh, 
forward tilt as opposed to the axe. Forward tilt is nowhere near as big of a commit. But when you have someone on the ledge like that and they're at low percents, like it's good to just kind of have a hitbox out there that you can extend and hopefully catch their uh, getup. Yeah, absolutely. It makes that move like super stupid menacing. He didn't even want to like stale out his axe or anything by doing that. That being said, is able to get back onto the stage aggressively. But that's the whiffed up B. Pokey Lamb. <gasps> that mash is crazy, dude! Oh wow. He got out of that so quick. You know, I do like that Pokey Lamb, he wanted to be like that like safe better than Sarley. Yeah. Yeah, it goes through the ox. Definitely like a little bit bigger of a hitbox and, and I guess I smash. It's also pretty quick. So Beast is definitely preemptively preemptively mashing under the assumption that Pokeland's gonna go for the berry as opposed to any other option. Even when you're like, yeah, you could have just have smashed. Uh, he get, he went for the berry anyways, and Beast just was cognizant of that fact, and just mashed super quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the axe, he was able to take that stock when he did it again. <laughs> And hopefully that just means that Pokemon's gonna start using the axe mark in uh, future interactions like that, and these won't be up as much. Did you see how much Whoa. damage those two up -ins did? That did a ridiculous amount. The move is ridiculous, and also, oh my god, really, really good use of the side B from Pokemon. The Villager side B, like, frame one stops your horizontal momentum and just pauses you in place, and you're just, like, able to live so, so high. Like, yeah. notoriously characters like DDD, for instance, right? They don't have, like, many options to get out of um, when, when they, like, censor the far left, right, the last mm -hmm. I, I really want to. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw up there being massive as per usual yeah uh, i really want to call out the fact that there was one interaction where beast had poke lamb on the ledge and he was trying to go for a forward air but either he misinputted or he misread what uh poke lamb was trying to do and he jumped onto the platform that platform offers good coverage in this matchup because it makes it so characters like charizard can't do short hop forward air and stuff like that as easily yeah so it's definitely a consideration for this matchup not to mention the wall jumping which is huge for uh villager you see Pokemon dipping really deep, good stall to avoid the down air. Right now at this point, like, you know, Pokemon, he has no incentive to approach, he has no incentive to go in, he just wants to get back onto center stage and get chip by chip damage because he has a really, really good lead for himself right now. So you see he's playing really, really safely, he didn't even want to commit to the jump lead there. He just decided oh. to run up and shield. I don't know how he read that, uh, that down smash, but that was really nice. Yeah, that was... That was excellent. I'm just barely clipping with the last of them there. And they keep training too, like just ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Also love the use of the Vine Whip to get a little bit of extra height as a Ivysaur, and then jump out of it. Yeah, but right now this is such an awful space for the beast to be in. <gasps> Tries to set up the tree, but a little bit too late on it. If he only had set up like the first chip in it a little bit sooner, he might have been able to punish the recovery. Beast with a lot of rage. I do want to say this is completely doable for him. Like he's done it so many times before. I could totally see a back air in Pokelamp's future. You know, and he did <laughs> see it. Just maybe uh, a little bit sooner than he thought. Yeah. I can totally see uh, either. No, that's it. Uh, I was not <laughs> behind that nearly well enough. <laughs> I love Villager's face. He just looks so happy when he's back at me. Like, you like, put an eye out with that kid. Come on. Uh, all of all of Villager's um, freeze frames are like amazing. He just uh, he just has the most lax or casual or chill expressions in the game. He's the best. Love him. He's a good all kid. Right. So Beast is he a good kid? Yeah. Man, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, he's creepy. Like what a children, mean, child. He's, he's a creepy. child of the. He's like a child of the coin. He's like what do you expression mean on his face at all creepy. times. He's a creepy little child. All right. So next up, we have uh, Apollo versus Stan Luna, who apparently is Con Con. Uh huh. Um, not Mr. Con Con, but Con Con. Apparently, there's a thing called Con Con, which is uh, if you ever make rice. Uh, in like a pot, uh, how else would you make rice? If you ever make rice in a pot, and like you know, the the, the bottom gets like hard and starchy. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that's called that the, for the makings. That's called con con. Huh? I actually did not know that at all. I'd imagine yeah. the bottom starchy part would be really, really good. Like, I 